Using my airbrush, I prime all of the components using Vallejo Game Color White Primer, thinned down to a ratio of 1 to 1, paint to Windex. I'm not too worried about covering the top of the base entirely, I'm just making sure that all of the plastic areas around the edge of the base are covered because these are the areas that I'll have difficulty covering with the future coats of paint. I use this mixture because it ensures that the paint will cover nicely but it will still flow well and the Liquitex matte medium ensures that there is a matte finish. The addition of Windex means that the mixture is thin enough to go through an airbrush easily and more can be added if it's not flowing so well. I now begin to pre-highlight the model. This is basically highlighting the model, but instead of using colours, I use shades. So basically I have a black undercoat, I'm now going to begin to highlight using grey, and then eventually building up to white. I spray this onto the raised areas, I do a light dusting sort of coat, so I'm not going to get any paint into the recesses of the model. This same technique is used for all of the layers of paint that I'm going to apply. However, as I get into the lighter colours, I apply lighter and lighter coats and more selectively onto the highlight areas instead of dusting over the entire model. To get my lighter colour, as you can see here, what I do is I take a drop of white paint, I drop it into the cup on my hairbrush, I then add a drop of Windex, and then I mix this and the grey paint together. This results in a lighter grey tone, which is then ready to be applied to the model to get our next highlight. As I said earlier, I just continue to build up the layers of paint, slowly applying thinner and lighter coats of the paint, using lighter tones of grey. I repeat this process about six or so times, and then I'll go on to the pure white highlights. As you can see, I'm now using pure white for my final highlight. Now I need to be very controlled here because I don't want to wash out the previous shades that I've done. So what I'm doing is I'm using a piece of card to mask off any areas that could be at risk of receiving any overspray. And I'm then just spraying uh, the white paint onto the highlight areas. Not only is it important to get this on the raised plates, but it's also important to put this on some of the interesting details that we want to kind of pop out uh, after the paint job is finished. I'm now using Battlefield Brown to base coat the base of the tank. Now basically I'm just taking it out of the pot, gooping a bit onto the base, and then I'm dipping my brush in my water pot and also applying that to the base. Basically the paint and the water will mix on the base, resulting in a nice thin coverage of paint, uh, which will still get complete coverage and look quite nice. I then dry brush the base using bootstrap leather made by Privateer Press. And finally I apply a light dry brush of Hammerfall Car Key. I then make up a mixture of ready mixed filler, PVA glue, static grass and sand. This is then applied in two long sausage-like shapes on the model's base. This is going to be used to create a textured mud, which is where the tank will have driven through. This mud mixture is then moistened with water, and then the tank is pressed into it, resulting in nice tank track texture. The tank is then base coated using a mix of traitor green and dark green. Uh, it's predominantly traitor green, it's probably 90% traitor green uh, and 10% dark green by Vallejo Game Color. 
Uh, and this dark green is really just going to darken the mixture just a little bit so it's not so bright. This is being applied a little more thin than usual instead of being thinned down about two parts uh, Windex to two parts paint or a one to one ratio. Here I'm using uh, roughly around five parts paint to around seven parts Windex. So there's little more Windex and this is just going to result in a thinner coat of paint which will allow the pre-shading to show through. I'm applying this thinly, I'm kind of dusting it over a little bit and I'm going to apply several layers like I said so that the pre-shading will show through the base coat. I'm now doing a very fine highlight using the airbrush and this is using a mix of Traitor Green and Game Color Bone and this is probably mixed about 90% Traitor Green and 10% Bone and this is just thinned down normally with a ratio of 1 to 1 paint to Windex. If you don't really feel comfortable highlighting fine details with an airbrush then you can always do this by hand using a normal paintbrush. As you can see here, I have removed the needle cap from my airbrush. This is often a good idea when you're trying to paint in fine details. Vallejo Umber Shade is then applied to the wheels inside the tank tracks. This is going to create a nice, dark, dirty, messed up kind of effect. This is not for shading, as the wheels have already been highlighted and all of that. It's just for weathering purposes. I'm now going to give the entire tank a coating of gloss varnish. I'm not really going to show much of this because, uh, let's face it, it's not rocket science. Uh, just spray it over the entire thing. I'm now going to use a pin washing technique to make all the details stand out and to shade the model back a little bit. Uh, now to do this I'm using thinned down Vallejo Game Color Black Ink and I'm just carefully applying it into the recesses, any of the nooks and crannies where I want it to be darker or in between any sort of panel lines to make the individual armour plates stand out. Because of the gloss varnish, the wash should run nicely into the crevices without any problems. Any excess wash, when dry, is removed with a Q-tip dipped in Windex. Vallejo Model Air Black is then used to base coat all the tank tracks and any of the other black details. It's also used to base coat anything that's going to be a silver or metallic colour. Vallejo Model Air paints work really well when painting with a brush as well as airbrushing because they have such thin, fine pigment, they still cover really well even though they flow nicely out of the brush and onto the model. The mud areas on the base are then base coated in a brown colour and then several layers of washes and inks are applied through the airbrush to give it some depth and an interesting tone.
The tank tracks are then highlighted using an overbrush of a dark grey. This is made using a mixture of Bastion grey and Thamar black. The difference between an overbrush and a dry brush is that an overbrush still has plenty of paint remaining on the brush. You simply lightly brush over the area as you would with a dry brush. Whereas with a dry brush you remove most of the paint from the brush using a piece of paper towel or some other absorbent material. I'm now going to make the mud effects look like real mud. I'm going to make them look all wet and shiny. And to do this I'm going to be using water effects and I'm going to be using back to basics water effects. Now just a quick few tips, it's really important that you don't shake the bottle of the water effects because you'll introduce air and bubbles into your water effects, you just need to turn it over just carefully and apply it straight onto the base. It's really that simple, there's no basic science behind it, just apply it reasonably liberally to your base. If you want a thicker layer of water effects then you can apply multiple coats, you just have to wait for the previous layer to dry. Now you can get more cost effective uh, types of water effects, you know, you can get stuff from Woodland Scenics or by uh, Vallejo or Games Workshop or many other brands out there. I just like this back to basic stuff because you get a nice little bit in a dropper bottle, it's easy to apply and it works really well for doing model bases. And of course, you know, you don't get a heap of it so it wouldn't be practical for doing terrain and things, but for my purposes it's quite nice and that's why I keep it on hand. I now base coat all of the metallic parts using Vallejo Gunmetal Metal. Now this is kept very thin, almost to the consistency of a wash, and is applied in several thin layers. This is going to mean that as I gradually build up the layers, the coat will get more opaque. So what I do is I gradually painted less of the silver areas, and this will result in a highlighted effect before I even apply lighter coats of paint. To highlight the silver areas, I then use a small amount of game colour silver paint. The wooden areas are base coated in Beastie Brown by Vallejo Game Colour. They're then highlighted with a slightly lighter mix of brown, which has simply had a little yellow added to it. And then they are shaded using a little bit of sepia wash.